when it comes to buyers, this is how you make sure that you don't waste your time or your lender's time. Because I remember way in the beginning, I would get these buyer leads, right? People are like, oh, Lloyd, you know, I'm thinking about buying. And then I would send them to the lender and then the lender would be like, dude, these people are not answering. I've called, I texted, they're ghosting me. I have no idea what's going on. And then when he did get a hold of them, it turns out that they had really bad credit. Um, they were working, they were self-employed, but they weren't really reporting much. So they couldn't qualify for much. So I said, you know what lender, tell me what is, what are the questions that you ask buyers? Because I want to ask those questions before I even send them to you, because if they're not worth it, I don't want to waste your time. And I don't want to waste my time either thinking that I have a buyer lead when I really don't. So some of the questions that I, I ask buyers on very straightforward, especially once we've had a conversation, they're like, yeah, you know, Lloyd, maybe it's a referral. Maybe it's a family friend. I ask them the same three, you know, what is, uh, what is your time frame? Are you currently renting or are you on a lease or are you ready to go? Because if they're currently renting, they might be like, you know what? Our lease is up in September. So until that is up, then we'll be able to purchase. And if you get a situation like that, where they're in a, in a lease, you have to almost work backwards because in order for someone to purchase a home, it might take three months. So I, I tell them, you know what, we would have to start the process at least three months before your lease is over. That way we can kind of set everything up so that once that lease is done, you're hopefully moving in to your new home. So that I already future pace them. That is a word. I kind of let them know what to expect. So I asked them about that. I asked them, you know, how much do you currently have saved for a down payment? Do you have an idea of what your credit score looks like? Are you a wage earner or are you self-employed? Because if they're self-employed, they're going to get qualified differently than if they are a W-2, a wage earner. Um, I asked how many are going to be qualified together. Is it just one person, two, two people? Is it an entire family of four? Uh, and I asked about those others. So if it's like, uh, I'm talking to a wife and she says, yeah, it's going to be my husband and I, okay, awesome. Do you have an idea of what your, uh, income looks like? And they can give me like a monthly number or a yearly number. And again, all I'm doing is that I'm asking questions and I'm writing it down in a sheet of paper or on an Excel spreadsheet or an email, whatever it is, but I'm gathering this information because then I know if they tell me, okay, they have some money saved they have this type of job. If they have good credit, anything over, hopefully over 620 or over 700, even better. But if someone tells me, yeah, you know, my husband and I, we have 480 and 510 that I'm going to be like, you know what? It sounds like right now it's best for you guys to work on your credit and get your scores up just because the minimum requirement is 620 or whatever it is. And you can ask your lender about this because I know numbers always change. But as I'm asking these questions, if all the boxes check off, then the next thing that I say is that I'm going to put them in a group text and connect them with my lender. Now, the reason that you want to put them in the group text is because now they know that the lender's going to reach out. The lender knows that you're also in that group text. So if the buyer doesn't respond, um, it's almost like we all know, you know, Mr. Buyer, that you're not responding. So what's going on? So the, that group text is, is a great thing for you to do. But again, these are questions that I ask so that you're not wasting your time and the lender's not wasting their time. Now, if someone says, yeah, you know, um, I have money saved, uh, but I just lost my job and I don't have anything. Well, if you want to buy a house, you need a job. So, you know, again, these are things that I would recommend if you're watching this, get with your lender and find out what those questions that they ask or that information that they need to know are. That way, again, you know, so that you're not wasting your time, their time. And then also now, you know, with the changes that are coming and working with buyer's agents, I'm not going to dive into that in this training, but hopefully the broker that you're with is doing trainings on how to have conversations and getting the buyer's rep agreement signed uh, so that you are also covering that when you're talking and pre-qualifying your buyers.